الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله it's important for us to explore what is the motive what is the position of Ahl Sunnah of the Salafis for regarding the issue of Ghiba and Namima Ahl Sunnah takes the position that was legislated by Allah Azza wa Jal and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith, as it was mentioned, the hadith of Abi Huraira, I believe, or Abdullah bin Mas uh, uh, <coughs> one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mentioned that they were going by some graves. And he said, the, they were, uh, he said, Murrah Nabi, Murrah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi qabarain. Faqal, inna huma la yu'adhiban wa ma yu'adhiban fi kabir. Amma ahrahuma fakana la yastatalun min al-bawl. Wa amma al-akhir fakana yimshi bin namima. Faakhada jaridatun rutbatan fashakaha in Nisfain. Faqaraza bi kulli qabarin wahidatan. Fakulna man, lima fa'alta hadha ya Rasulullah kama qal. The Prophet وسلم, was going, uh, they were walking by a graveyard. And he was going by these graves and he said, Verily, he pointed to these two graves, Verily they're being punished. And they're not being punished for something which is considered great. As for one of them, is they used to not wash themselves properly when they made istinja, when they were cleaning themselves, their private parts, uh, after using the restroom. And as for the other, Fakana Yimshi bin Namima, that they, they used to uh, slander and backbite the people. <coughs> backbite the people. Then the Prophet Sallallahu he took a, a branch and he broke it into two pieces, a, a wet branch, and he placed it on each of the graves and he said, uh, uh, he placed it upon each of the graves, and then the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'in, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, why did you do that? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, uh, in hopes that while they, these br branches remain wet, that this will make some of their punishment lighter. And, Habitifillah, one of the things we benefit from this hadith is that this was something khas for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that we do not make this from the sunnah that we put a branch hopeful, hoping that it will lighten the burden of the person in the grave. This was something the Prophet وسلم, was able to do that Allah blessed him with as a miracle from the Prophet وسلم. The point of mentioning that hadith showing us the position of Ahl Sunnah that Ahl Sunnah detests ghiba. That Ahl Sunnah does not immerse themselves in ghiba, meaning to speak about others carrying tales in order to spread facade. And this is what we see some of our brothers and sisters falling into. And may Allah forgive us and forgive them. And when they speak about others, and they speak about the dua, and they speak about the ulama, which is even greater sin, and they spread it around communities, or in fact, spread it around communities around the world. This is a very dangerous characteristic. This is a characteristic of those people who are punished in the grave. So it's imperative that we stay far away from this, that we affirm news when we hear it, and we only spread that which is authentic, and only spread that which there's a benefit in spreading. Ahabat <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem, وَلَا يَغْتَابْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيُحِبُّ أَهْدَكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلُ اللَّحْمَ أَخِي مَيْتًا فَكَرَحْتَمُوهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujurat, He says, and do not backbite one another. Would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? Verily, you would detest it, because that's something det that's that's uh, disgusting. Chubf. And with that, Ahabat Tifinah, that shows us that backbiting is something khabif. It is something wicked. It is something sinful. It is something detestable, and we should detest this. The tafsir from Ghiba, Ahabat Allah, can be attained from the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, who said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, 
أتدرون ما قيبة؟ قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره قيل أفرأيت أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد ابتبته وإن, وإن لم يكن فيه فقد بحته رواه مسلم إن سعديت إن سعديت مسلم It gives us the tafsir, the explanation of Ghiba. That backbiting, according to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is, is, was, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, do you know what Ghiba is? And the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, those companions who were with him, they said, Allah and his Messenger know best. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is mentioning your brother with that which he hates. And then it was said, have you seen or what about in the case in which it's true about what you said about your brother? The Prophet Sallallahu responded, he said, if what you said is true about him, then you have backbitten him. If what you said is not true, then you have slandered him. So then, Ahabat Allah, it shows us that you're only on a path of sharm if you're speaking about the people. Unless it is mishroor, unless it is something which is legislated by the deen, that you have the knowledge and the ability to do so, you have the determination to do so, you have the fiqh and the hikmah to do so, and you are on the haq when doing so. And you have the niyyah, the intention to uh, lift the harm or protect the community from the person's harm. So meaning, Allah, to give us an example, if someone, their aqidah, they have inhiraf, they have many uh, mistakes and issues in aqidah, their aqidah is ba based on batal, or they have many masail in which they fall into error and mistakes, then of course, it would be mishroor for someone of knowledge to warn against that individual. And that would not be ghiba madhmoon. This would not be sinful ghiba, but rather this would be from the bab and nasiha. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, he said salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, ad-deena nasiha, ad-deena nasiha, ad-deena nasiha. Qala li man, qala lillahi, وَلِكِتَابِهِ وَلِرُسُولِهِ وَلِعَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَلِعَمَّتِهِمْ The Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, he said the deen is a, a sincere, sincerity, or a sincere advice. The deen is sincere advice. The deen is sincere advice. And then it was said to him, uh, to who? They wanted to know who, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ. He said, for Allah, for his messenger, uh, for his, his book, the Quran, for giving advice, sincere advice to the uh, Imams of the Muslims, the leaders of the Muslims, and the general folk. So this is from when you are warning against the people of Sharm, the people of Sin, the people of Bid'ah, the people of Ma'asi, the people of Zambaka, whichever category they fall into, or if they fall into all those categories, you're warning against them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this takes taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll talk about it in another sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us in any time in our life that we've ever backbitten someone. May Allah forgive us and may the people forgive us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.